Now for the memorization part of the video, let's start with just TCP protocols that will break them up into both TCP and UDP. The first TCP protocol we'll look at is FTP. It stands for File Transfer Protocol. File Transfer Protocol uses two different methods to be able to transfer files, something called an active mode that always uses the same port number to send data, and something called a passive mode that can completely pick any number that it would like to do to be able to send data. Because we're really focused here on well-known port numbers, we'll just look at the active mode numbers. And for File Transfer Protocol, the, the control protocol, the protocol that's used to communicate between the client and the server to figure out what you'd like to do, what you'd like to transfer, is TCP port 21. When you're ready to actually transfer the data, it uses TCP port 20 to transfer that data. And again, that is in an active mode FTP. Another very common protocol you'll see is SSH. We've talked a little bit about SSH in previous videos. That stands for Secure Shell, and it uses TCP port 22 to be able to set up that terminal session, that encrypted link between your client and the server. SCP, another protocol we've talked about for Secure Copy. Because Secure Copy uses SSH to communicate, guess what? Uses exactly the same port number, TCP port 22. So if you can remember that Secure Copy uses SSH to communicate, then and you know what Secure Shell uses, TCP port 22, you're home free. Next on our list is SFTP, which stands for Secure File Transfer Protocol. If you recall, we had two methods of sending files over SSH, one that was very simple, SCP, one that provided you with more functionality, SFTP. And again, since they're all using SSH to communicate, it also only uses TCP port 22. This is getting relatively easy to keep track of these now. Telnet, if you happen to do unencrypted terminal sessions to an end station, uses its own port number of TCP port 23. Now we get into web protocols. These are very common. HTTP for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. A well-known protocol it uses is TCP80. And of course, the encrypted side of that is HTTPS, which stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secure. And it uses TCP ports 443. Those you've probably run into before. If you've ever had to configure a web server, you've had to configure port 80 and port 443. They almost always go in tandem. And well, one of the last file transfer protocols we'll look at is FTP over SSL. Even though FTPS is using SSL, there are different port numbers that have been set up. It's not really using port 443. It's using TCP port 990 for the control, and then TCP port 989 to do data in the active mode. Again, with that file transfer process we were talking about earlier, there's an active mode and a passive mode. In an active mode, we always know that TCP port 989 is used for data. The last TCP port we'll look at is NetBio. That stands for Network Basic Input Output System. And that particular protocol is TCP port 139 when we see NetBIOS sent over TCP IP. That is a session service that is used to set up sessions in NetBIOS. And it uses the TCP protocol to be able to do that. In our list of protocols, there was really only two protocols that used UDP to communicate. So this is going to be a relatively short slide to look at. The first is TFTP. That stands for Trivial File Transfer Protocol. It's an unencrypted and very simple file transfer method. It uses UDP over port 69. And the last one, and you'll certainly run into this one quite a bit, is NetBIOS going over IP using UDP port 137 to do name services and UDP port 138 to actually transfer data. We call that a datagram service.